Hello, I am Dr. Meenu Walia, Senior Medical Oncologist at Dharamshila Hospital. Today we are going to talk about pediatric cancers. Pediatric cancers or cancers of the children. This is a distinct entity in itself. Why is it so? There are two main reasons to it. One, we are talking of cancer in the most productive, most promising section of the society. And there is another reason to it. These pediatric cancers, if handled properly, the treatment of these cancers actually give excellent results. That is, what I want to say is, most pediatric cancers are curable if dealt the right way, the right time and the right treatment. Coming to the incidence of pediatric cancers, we all know that the incidence of cancer is increasing and as the incidence of cancer is increasing, the incidence of pediatric cancers, that is cancers in the children also seems to be increasing. There are various reasons to it, various reasons which are postulated, but the jinx of the story is that the incidence of cancer is increasing and that is why what is required is increased awareness, increased awareness on part of the parents on part of the society, on part of the general practitioners, the physicians, the pediatricians to refer the, these cases, to identify these cases early, get the right diagnosis made, get the right investigations done and refer them at the proper time to the referral, to the centre, to the cancer centres where proper treatment can be done. However, the sad part of pediatric oncology in India is the dearth of the lack of proper healthcare facilities. Most of these cancers are ignored for a long time. Firstly, I will say the society shares a maximum blame in this because we keep on ignoring the layman keeps on ignoring the warning signals for a long, for a long time, even in the children, like symptoms of anemia, like lethargy, weakness, uh, loss of the, uh, anorexia, that is loss of appetite, is ignored by the parents for a long time. It must be worm infestation or it might, might be something else. Similarly, even symptoms like joint pains. The warning signs of cancer, these should not be ignored neither by the parents nor by the general practitioners. One should always keep the index of suspicion very high. For example, if a small child is presents with prolonged fever which is not responding to usual treatment or the child is having frequent infections, joint pains or bleeding from gums while doing his, while brushing his teeth if he is having bleeding from gums, one should always have leukemia at the back of one's mind and the blood tests are very simple. The identification is not as if a battery of tests is required. A simple blood test like a complete blood count which hardly costs anything should be done in these cases where we can actually pick up with the leukemia is there or not. It is only if the suspicion is there in the blood count that we need to then we need to go for further tests that needs to be done. Again what I would like to highlight is the jinx of everything is that one should get the right treatment, right place and right time. It is the three rights which are very important in all cancers, not only pediatric cancers and all the more in pediatric cancers because most pediatric cancers are curable and gives excellent results. Uh, let us talk about what are the common pediatric cancers. The common cancers which are seen in children, leukemias are the commonest. Leukemias, the dreadful word as it is, meaning blood cancers and out of the leukemias, it is the acute leukemias that is which are considered to be more dreadful than chronic leukemias which are more common in children. After leukemias, what comes is the brain tumours, the second commonest co uh, cancer in the children, the second common cancer in children, followed by lymphomas and then comes our germ cell tumours or other solid tumours like bone tumours, osteosarcomas, Ewing sarcomas or rhabdomyosarcomas, basically bone and soft tissue tumours, then Wilm tumours, neuroblastomas, etc. Leukemias, how does a child with leukemia present? The symptoms as I already said, they are very vague symptoms. Some, a child who is not developing properly, is pale, lethargic, weak, lo has lost his appetite and probably he is having prolonged fever, the fever not responding to usual treatment, coming with joint pains and bruises over the different parts of the body, bleeding from gums or bleeding from any part of the body. These are the signals which should alert everybody that I should get the child investigated for leukemia. It should be ruled out. A simple blood test like complete blood counts may give us some identification, may give us some uh, 
some pointers towards the presence of leukemia and this needs to be confirmed further. We might require specialized tests like flow cytometry, cytogenetics, bone marrow evaluation and other tests. Once the diagnosis of leukemia is done, uh, the idea should be to complete the diagnostic workup as early as possible and once the confirmation of diagnosis is there, one should always start with the therapy. The main therapy of leukemia is chemotherapy and depending on the type of leukemia whether it is acute lymphoblastic leukemia or it is acute myeloid leukemia, induction chemotherapy is generally started. One needs to take considerable care during the course of chemotherapy and a uh, lot of precautions have to be taken which the treating doctor always explains to the patient and the attendants and the treatment the only point that I need to highlight is the treatment of leukemia should always be done in specialized centers where all the facilities for diagnosis, management, treatment and not only management of the disease but management of the complications of disease is also available. And uh, needless to say uh, somewhere around uh, two decades back the treatment was hardly anything and the response story was very different but today with advances in technology, advances in diagnostic workup and at various other advances in supportive care etc. The results are very good, most leukemias, most childhood leukemias are curable and the results are as good as any other center in the west. Coming to the next uh, major cancer which is seen in the children, the brain tumors. How does the child present with? It may be frequent headaches, frequent episodes of vomiting or maybe ataxia as we say some irregularity when the child is walking. These are the symptoms which any, pa any parent should be alert, should become alert to or should point out to a general practitioner and one should always go for specialized investigations uh, to get the diagnosis confirmed or ruled out. If again the brain tumors, again the story is if diagnosed at the right time, right place and receives the right treatment, most of these tumors will may have will have very good results and one can have very excellent long term outcomes in these cases. Lymphomas is another common problem which is seen in the children. The sad part of our nation is most of these lymphomas in the early stages they present with what? They just present with enlargement of the lymph nodes and the sad part is they are generally taken as tuberculosis and started on anti-tubercular treatment. So by the time the child comes to you he has been receiving anti-tubercular treatment for a long time and the disease sometimes become advanced. So the, the main idea is that once we are thinking of and we should always have any lymph node in a child even if there is a family history one should have a FNAC or a cytology of that lymph node should always be done at least to rule out or to confirm that it is tuberculosis or and it is not something else. A lymph similarly lymphomas if picked up early will give excellent results and one will have long term survivors. The many lymphoma patients treated at the right time, at the right place and the right treatment this goes a long way and uh, uh, the survivors, the long term survivors are not unknown in this disease. Coming next to another common tumor which we see in the young age group is the germ cell tumors. Germ cell tumors again are very chemosensitive tumors, gives excellent results. Again the jinx of the story is we should catch them early and the idea, the main idea, the main aim of the treating doctor, of the physicians, of everybody should be that at the first onset of symptoms one should try to catch these tumors and then treat them properly. In leukemias, what happens? The problem with our nation is most of the majority of the population is illiterate. What happens is when we are actually treating the patient and we start getting good results, the child seems to be responding and actually getting cured. That is the time that when some of the parents, they default on treatment. They, the common perception is now the child is alright. Why should the treatment should continue? The child goes back and never comes back. What is important is to get the treatment for the right duration. To have a complete treatment is also a very essential part of the treatment planning and it is if we want to have excellent results we need to have a complete treatment that that message this message should actually go to everybody that once the child is responding it is all the more reason to continue the treatment and complete the entire course of treatment.
to pick up brain tumors one should alert the symptoms the symptoms like headache vomiting or double vision or symptoms like ataxia instability while walking an uh, imbalance this should alert both the parents and the physicians to rule out the presence of brain tumor what needs to be done is probably an imaging of the brain an mri of the brain and a csf cytology apart from other routine investigations most uh, brain tumors will be picked up by these tests alone and then depending on the type of tumor the place where it is for the uh, treatment needs to be planned the treatment is generally a combination of surgery radiation plus minus chemotherapy another important group of cancers in the young age group is the germ cell tumor germ cell tumor becomes specially important because in this age group uh, you generally get very good results if the treatment is done the right way but what is important is one also need to consider regarding the future aspects future aspects of uh, preserving the fertility because these are the things which are important consideration so in young girls when we are treating cancers of the germ cell tumors of the ovary one needs to go for specialized surgeries like fertility sparing surgeries so that the future is also taken care of similarly proper counseling the psychological counseling not only of the young people but also of the parents need to be done and one need to address the issues like sperm banking and all these things that like what are the problems the future in the future the child may have and how we can address those problems right at the beginning of the treatment and decrease these problems later on how do these germ cell tumors present the most common presentation is they present with swelling in the testicular area or they may present with a lump abdominal lump or something like that and the tests are generally very simple the uh, there are tumor markers or the serological tests which are actually blood tests which can be done which can give us some identification and along with the histopath diagnosis and the radiological scans this generally tells us the gives us the diagnosis and the stage of the disease and most of these tumors can be treated in a very efficient manner with long term survivors with actually excellent results and long term survivors bone tumors is another important cancer that we commonly find in the pediatric age group uh, the growing bones this is basically the cancer of the growing bones the growing bones are more prone to develop cancers and the commonest cancers which are seen in this age group is the osteosarcomas and uh, the ewing sarcoma the cancer of the growing bones and how does the child present the child generally presents uh, with a history of trauma and pain in any part of the body the common growing signs like uh, the general history that is given by the parents is he has gone out playing and then he was hit by a ball and after ever since he has been there he has sustained trauma the child is having pain at one particular site all that is required to be done is a simple x-ray of the involved part of the body and most bone tumors can actually be diagnosed on an x-ray if there is a suspicion of a bone malignancy on an x-ray we generally ask for a histopath diagnosis and further diagnostic work and further staging work up if the diagnosis of bone tumor is confirmed and the histopathology everything is confirmed then further de treatment depends on the stage of the cancer Uh, generally bone tumors like ewings and osteosarcomas require a combination of treatment chemotherapy being an important part and apart from that surgery or radiation may also be required in these cases these cancers also if treated properly and at the right time and at the right stage if picked up at the right time and uh, they can give us excellent results and one can have long term survivors of bone tumors also other important tumors that are commonly seen in children are the tumors of the solid organs like neuroblastomas wim tumors or sarcomas like rhabdomyosarcomas the patient generally presents with a lump it is generally painless to begin with so any lump like wim stoma the common history that is given is the the mother while uh, bathing the child actually notices the lump in the abdomen and then comes to the doctor so any lump that comes to the notice of the parents or to the general practitioner should actually be evaluated further a complete diagnostic workup should be done 
so that we can pick up this lumps, the etiology, the cause and the stage of the disease and further proper treatment can be done. Again like any other pediatric cancer, most of these are chemosensitive tumors and if picked up at the right time, treatment can give us excellent results. Another common tumor of the children is the tumor of the eye which is more commonly known as retinoblastomas. What is very important is that this is the tumor where a family history is very important. So if the sibling is suffering from retinoblastoma, the parents should always be alert if there is a family history of retinoblastoma, there is a very high incidence of retinoblastoma in other siblings also. And uh, any symptom or rather than even before the developing of the symptom, it is the mother or the parents which notice what we say as a cat's eye, which notice the uh, which notice some abnormality in the eye and they should actually take the patient immediately to their physician or first care provider, first physical health care provider who can pick up this disease and refer the patient to the proper treatment or center where treatment can actually in an early stage give us gratifying results. Another important tumor which is quite common in the children is the cancer of the eye or retinoblastoma. The important factor in this tumor is that a family history is very important. So if there is a family history of retinoblastoma, one needs to be very much aware that there is a high incidence in the other siblings uh, also and, one, and this is generally picked up by the parents themselves. The initial uh, symptom, the initial diagnosis the, is generally picked up by the Parents themselves when they notice the cat's eye or something like some abnormality in the eye of the child and they rush, they generally, they should be rushing the patient to the first healthcare provider or the general practitioner. Further diagnostic workup should definitely be done and again like any other cancer, if we pick this disease early and treat the proper way, we can have long term gratifying results.